When murder and mystery enters the life of young Hisako, will she be able to rise to the occasion and master her new armor-based powers? Well, let's hop into the pages of Ultimate X-Men issue number two and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the book, we see Hisako is having a horrifying nightmare courtesy of the Shadow King. Well, I called him the Shadow King in the previous issue, even though the recap page for this issue simply calls him the Shadow, so let's put a pin in that one for later, why don't we? In the nightmare, poor Hisako is forced to relive one of the last conversation she had with her good friend Subasa before his suicide. And hey, I can't believe I didn't catch this in the last issue, but Subasa actually means wing in Japanese. Meaning, even though this is a new universe with new people, Armor and Wing actually ended up having a relationship anyway. In fact, that might extend to other characters too, but I'll get to that when I get there. Once again, we see poor Hisako is just overcome with crippling survivor's guilt. She wonders if she didn't ask enough questions when her friend tried to confide in her, if there was any Anything she could have done to save him. Questions that are sadly all too real and all too cutting to people who have ever lost someone to suicide. Further complicating things, when Hisako comes to, she has another strange note like the one she received in the earlier issue, telling her to meet the shadow creature somewhere. At first, she tries to busy her mind so she doesn't have to think about it, attending her motorcycle lessons and even picking up eggs for her mother. Everything changes, though, when Hisako ends up coming face to face with a new girl. Her name, we discover, is Mei Ig Garashi, and no, your eyes do not deceive you, she has snow white hair and lightning bolt earrings. As well as what is clearly a little X pin. Why is this? Well, apparently this girl has modeled her sense of fashion after her favorite Wakandan freedom fighter, the Wind Rider, aka the woman who would be Storm, implying that there's actually way more of a mutant underground community being born right now that Hasako has no idea about. It also just serves as a really nice bit of connective tissue between this book and what's going on in the Ultimate Black Panther book, in case you haven't been paying attention. Mei is super nice, super bubbly, and super interested in Hisako once she realizes that she's the girl who survived that car accident not that long ago. It's clear that Hisako has been crying out for a friend ever since she lost Tsubasa, and because this girl seems like she wouldn't run away, she decides to open up to her about the mysterious letter and even gets her to tag along. Where are they going? It was a shrine in the first issue, and in this issue, they end up going to the old abandoned schoolhouse, because nothing creepy ever happens in old abandoned schoolhouses. Especially not in the old abandoned anatomy lab. I learned this from reading the appendix at the back of the book, but apparently a lot of J-horror happens in anatomy labs, mainly because, well, there's a lot of dead things in there. And if you're a young person like our cast of characters in this story, it's probably going to be one of the first places where you end up making an acquaintance with death. And, of course, this whole place is decked out like a horror movie right now, complete with gooey, dripping plush animal heads, candles, and weird serial killer string theory boards. It's here too, Hasako once again ends up coming face to face with the Shadow, who tells her that three more of the boys who bullied her friend are dead. Because, you know, this sad, dejected girl didn't have enough survivor's guilt already, let's keep piling on and piling on her, why don't we, and see what happens. At first, the two girls think they're safe because a security guard comes up behind them trying to kick them out of the building. Unfortunately, when they turn around, the security guard guard's face have become nightmarish worms. And all I gotta say is, god damn, why do I keep choosing to read this book right before bed? The girls try and make their escape, aided by the fact that, you guessed it, Mei is actually a mutant. She makes use of a massive wind blast to blow back the worm-faced monstrosity. Now, the book actually refers to her superpowered altered ego as Mei Storm, but I actually have to wonder, is she supposed to be a new version of Wind Dancer, because that was a character who was part of the same generation of mutants as Armor and Wing back in 616. Could we possibly see other Paladin squad members moving forward like Blindfold, maybe? And also, just so you think the book hasn't completely forgotten about Hisako, she also ends up activating her armor powers once again to try and protect her and her brand new friend. Unlike May Storm, armor has no idea how to actively control her powers yet and still basically rocks it as a reflex. It's after that the story actually ends up pulling back as we're introduced to another brand new character, a short, fat little otaku in a closet complete with the same serial killer string theory board that we saw in the Shadow's room. Heavily implying that the Shadow isn't a ghost at all, but just another mutant who's being controlled remotely by this guy who, you guessed it, has put two and two together that he also recognizes Hisako. But what's his connection?
connection to Sabasa? Why is he knocking off all the kids who bullied him? Well, I guess we're gonna have to keep reading to find that out, won't we? Now, as the comic comes to a close, we actually jump forward in time to the beginning of the brand new school year. Hisako is there at the assembly when, you guessed it, she's met by Mei, who's going to be one of her brand new classmates and would-be new best friend. She even refers to Hisako as Chan, the classic Japanese honorific showing endearment. And so that was Ultimate X-Men issue number two, everybody, and I'm happy to say the first issue was not a fluke, and Peach Mamako is most definitely going places and doing things with this brand new series. Hell, that first issue almost didn't even feel real to me, thinking back to it, it feels like, wow, did this lady actually trick Marvel into releasing an adult, mature horror series? And then even got them to call it X-Men? I feel like this is a book that they probably wouldn't have made just a couple years ago, but when we stop and consider it, we've kind of been in a golden age of horror comics as of recently. Something's Killing the Children, Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, and plenty more full sentence titles that I'm probably forgetting. Maybe Marvel thought now was the time to actually really get in there if they were already going to be reinventing the wheel that is X-Men and mutants from the ground up. If I was to sum up this book in one word, that word would actually be confident. It's very confident in its subject matter, in its characters, in its pacing, and the fact that it actually ended up rubbing so many different people the wrong way because they weren't used to something so manga-influenced in their traditional superhero comic only actually makes me like it more. I hope this book has a long run because two issues in and I'm totally hooked. I want to unravel the mystery of this. I want to know where we go from here. Overall, I'd give this one another very positive 8.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and, you know, help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw. So I want to thank you all and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.